Monster in the Maze is a really exciting project. I'm so proud of it. It's a collaboration between the London Symphony, the Aix-en-Provence Music Festival in France, and the Berlin Philharmonic. Simon Rattle is going to conduct it in all three places and my job will be preparing all the singers. There are professional players and school players, professional singers and amateur singers. Um, and the whole thing comes together to make a huge community event. There are about 25 players from the London Symphony Orchestra who play in it and they are matched by youth players so that it's full of people doing an apprenticeship. But it's also full of LSO players showing the next generation how to do it. I think of Jonathan Dove being the nearest thing that we have to Benjamin Britten today. He writes really sympathetic choral music, excellent solo vocal lines. He writes imaginatively for every instrument and for every instrument differently because he understands every instrument. About 25 or 30 years ago, for example, he reorchestrated the whole of Wagner's ring for me for just 18 players. Um, and when you've done that sort of thing, of course, my goodness, you've served a real old-fashioned apprenticeship, which is why his skill levels are so high. He's very good at writing just right for primary school children, for secondary school children. Um, and challenging people in exactly the way that Britain did with Friday afternoons for primary school children. And Jonathan stretches us in a similar way. Well, the first step with writing an opera is, is always finding the story. And sometimes people come to me with a story, and that makes life very easy. Um, in this case, I went looking for a story that you could tell with groups of children and groups of young people. And out of conversations with my regular collaborator, Alasdair Middleton, uh, came the idea of telling this particular story, the story of the young people who are sent as a sacrifice to Crete, um, but are saved from death at the hands of the Minotaur by Theseus. It's a story which involves big groups of people, uh, big action. When I encounter a story that I think might become an opera, I'm aware, first of all, that there's, in a way, there's a smell of music, that there's something in there that I sense might yield something musically exciting, some, some sound that I'd like to make. Well, the exciting thing about writing for amateurs is that, uh, particularly, for example, with ad amateur adults, they are getting to do something that they don't do every day, all day. So there's a particular energy in amateur performers. There uh, is an excitement that they have in the act of performing, which is somehow different from um, a professional group who are doing it absolutely all the time. Uh, professionals bring something to life in an extraordinary way, uh, but there's some extra kind of energy around amateur performers on stage, which is very exciting. <laughs> It does come down to this very elemental thing of, and simple thing of storytelling, and particularly through music, particularly through the singing, through the voice, where you are using your your body and your and your emotions to tell a story. It's an incredibly levelling uh, thing to do, and, and I think everybody is subject to the same uh, overcoming of, of anxiety and overcoming of, of fear of limitation and. And, um, and so to, to have the experience of working with, with, with anybody, what's interesting for me is also that the techniques are the same. I mean, the, the same things you could work with a small child and, and a f fully grown professional who's been in the business for 30 years that, um, are going to help. Uh, and that's, uh, so it's wonderfully refreshing.
He's just as modest. He's got to have all those texts on the top. He's not there. He's going to go. He's also slightly deaf. Don't forget that. He's just. Then he can't really hear you. He's just as modest. Make sure you can hear See how? And also, this one, self deprecating on the word self. We've not a lot of time to sing that to you. We're really energised in what you're doing. One, two, off we go. This is his modest. Pardon? Self deprecating too. quite interesting because um, obviously there's multiple choirs and an orchestra and like multiple orchestras as well everyone's coming together pretty much for the first time now so everyone's been rehearsing individually which means it's now quite confusing trying to put it all together because we're supposed to be up on stage acting our part of children that are terrified and whatever but everyone then keeps turning around to try and see what the choir behind them is doing and what's the soloist we've never seen them perform before so it's, we're, we're interested but also we have to try and keep focusing on what we're doing so I think everyone's kind of putting each other off, but in a good way. It's such a wonderful thing, and it's it's so great to enjoy this this spectacular piece, which has been brought together. There are so many different parts. There's the orchestra, the conductor, everybody plays a huge part in it, and it's just it's great to share this with an audience. It's just a fantastic opportunity. I mean, I would never get to sing on the Barbican stage with the London Symphony Orchestra and Sir Simon Rattle. I mean, even as a professional, mostly, uh, it's just amazing. It's an incredible opportunity, and that's why I'm a member of the choir. It's fantastic. Yeah. Your children are about to be taken off to be all-you-can-eat buffet, please. I'm not a crescendo. Now, otherwise, you sound... Well, actually, you've got quite a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine why you think... That. So, let's get just, just pack 50. I'm determined that we should, as often as possible, get into the Barbican, basically all of us, so that if you're eight years old, you can really say, oh, the Barbican, I perform there, London Symphony Orchestra, I'm a member of that, you know. I rehearse there every week, I give concerts with them. Because if we don't sort out the future of music education, no one else is going to, or we can at least lead the way. We should be funding our future, our future audience, our future performers, and by our future performers I most emphatically mean players in the orchestra, but also members of our choruses and so on. An orchestra that is totally relevant to its society so that no one can possibly say, we don't need this.